Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday. Welcome, welcome to the Wednesday's episode of Speaking Out, Exposing Corruption and Incompetence. Welcome one and all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And I'll share the live, share the live. Let them know that we're on. I know a lot of people are asking about Monday, but we're going to adjust that in a short while. In the meanwhile, welcome to this uh, uh, midweek episode. Share the live. Let people know that we are on and we are ready to go. So many students in the schoolyard this morning. Oh, my. They broke the record. You guys broke the record. Congratulations. Last week, a record was established. And this week, that record for the number of students in the schoolyard was smashed. So congratulations to you all. And as I said, people are longing for the credible, value, valuable information. And we are going to bring it to you. My colleague, Mr. Clinton Conway, is already in the studio. He's ready and raring to go. And so am I. And I'm sure you are ready and raring to receive the credible, valuable information. So welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Many persons would not have been this fortunate. And therefore, we have to sing praise and thanks to the Almighty for allowing us um, to be here. Always, always, I would tell you every week, always give praise and thanks. It is not by happening, uh, uh, it's not by chance. It's not by happenstance that we're here. It's because the good Lord decided that we are going to be here this morning and um, we have to give praise and thanks. Let's give praise and thanks always. And as I said, we're going to do the roll call in a short while because we have established by now that roll call is very, very important. And one of the things I would normally say is that one of the reasons for doing the roll call is to let people know that we're not just coming here and telling you that many people are in the schoolyard waiting. Not um, that so much so that when we went live this morning about six, six just after six o'clock, some of the early students have been struck off the, the top of the list by the um, platform. But I have a record of those persons. I have a record, so I'm gonna be able to tell you the first person to come in um, this 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 morning. So share the live, share the live. Let them know that we are here. Wednesday, the twentieth of March, twenty. Uh, 24. And, and we are moving along. We are moving along. We are moving along. Once more, share the life. But let me say this before I start. Again, I want to encourage you to sub. go to YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Go to Facebook. And when you get to Facebook, you like the page, Speaking Out, Exposing Corruption and Incompetence. And while you're here now, give us a thumbs up. Go give us a thumbs up. Show your appreciation. Give us um, some love. Let the emojis, emojis come, man. Let the emojis. I only see a couple thumbs up so far. Go and give the thumbs up so that it can be reflected on the page. Please, not in the comments, but on the page itself. Thank you. I see people are doing that. Yeah, so we're here and we're ready to go. We are here in the class and we are ready to go. This morning, as I've said, once the program was scheduled, we have so many students in the schoolyard that you broke the record. And as soon as we went live a few minutes ago and opened the school door, all the students and, and enrolled in. I must remind you that once you are a subscriber on uh, YouTube, once the program is scheduled, you get an opportunity to go in right away and to make your comments. For those forces on Facebook, you have to wait until the program goes live at 11, then before you can come in and to make your comments. So if you want to participate even before, you go, li go live, the thing to do is to subscribe to YouTube. And also, when you do that, you will get notifications whenever something is posted on the page, whenever we make an e comment. And I can see from the queries we have had about uh, Monday, people call in, what happened? You don't have a program today. That is because you have not subscribed to the channel. That is because you have not liked the page on um, Facebook. Because if you had done so, you would have received the notification that I sent out that will be, there will be no program on Monday due to unforeseen circumstances. And I did say last Wednesday when we met that there was not going to be any class on Monday because I had other engagements. And let me say this. I mean, corporal punishment is out loud. You can't put your cross and give you a six either on your seat or, or, or can't the police on your Botox? That's what I said. Man was shot in his Botox. I don't know which part of the body there is. 
So we can't do that. And, and, and therefore, we have to find some other way, some other acceptable way of dealing with you students who are not subscribing. And you're calling to ask me whether it's a program or not, when I indicated quite clearly that we would not have had a program. But be that as this way, we're going to come and we're going to forgive you and we're going to bring the good news um, to you. But before we go into announcements and all of that, let me roll, run the roll call quickly. And then, well, as quickly as I can, given the numbers, and then we're going to move in to the program. As I indicated, when we scheduled, some people came out very early. And I made a note. It's a good thing I made a note. Because what happened, I realized that some people were struck off um, this morning. The first person in, and I can't put it up there because I said at 6.28 this morning, was Felicia. Felicia came in, followed by Wayne from the UK. Then we had Sean Rabenjana, our man from um, New York. He came in at 6.30, followed by Patricia Gravesandy, followed by Vibert Lawson, followed by Emerson. And those persons have been struck off on the platform. Not on my phone. And then the first person on the platform here is Ulrich. Then we have Brian. Then we have Matthew, Courtney from New Jersey, Earl, um, he said, uh, Pace and Power, he said, Carlton, my squad mate, George, my countryman, Francis Kidd um, from Melanie, he came in at 642. Rawl came in at 643. Then we had Anthony at 645. Osborne um, came in. And he's from Carolina, North Carolina. Welcome, North Carolina in the house. He came in at 6.50. Then we had Tessa. We know Tessa is from Orlando, Florida. Dexter came in um, at what time? He came in at 6.54. Then we had Denise. So, and she says she's from Deerfield, Florida. Then Floyd, Denny. Uh, and Debbie's from Providence on the East Bank of Demerara. Magnell. Then we had Gavin from Maryland. Patricia, Patricia is from Philadelphia. Ian, Pito, Pito is from um, Queens, New York. Then BX, BX is from New Jersey. Then Barbara came in. Uh, Malcolm, C Como from New Jersey. Queenie from Brooklyn. Start Colin is from Queens. K came in next. Winston from the UK. Welcome, Winston. Carlisle. He said he's hungry. I, I can't help you there. <laughs> he says hungry. Then uh, Ronald came in. Um, who else? Original black man is much here. I want to contact him. Let's give him a shout, man, my brother. Clive is from the UK. My countryman is from the UK. Gordon um, came in. Talk about the, in, uh, the, the, the beauty about this program. Then we have Dav. Uh, Mandela, I miss you for a few weeks. Barlet from Linden. Melissa, then we had Pamela from Westside, Oren, 12758, yep, would have been number today, but I remember it. Then we had Fergus, John, uh, Carville, Wayne, Evan Lena, Jaco from Georgia, Rastaman is here with us, Isabella is in class, she's in the schoolyard. Then we have L. Ben, another Ben. What's, what's these bands? What's these bands? Aileen, female umpire is here. Princess uh, from Lamar Springs. La, uh, Lamar, yeah. I think it's Lamar Springs, yeah. Yeah, she says that the Lamar Springs. The man from Texas, Everett, is here. Rohan from New, New York. All the way from California, we have Terrence. Then we have Ovid, 0937. George is in the house. Uh, Pauline is here. Um, Camille is here. Lynette from the UK is in the house. She says she missed class last uh, Monday. We miss having you too. Then Lucius is in the house. I can't recall seeing this one before Carbine Tires. Apparently a new student or, a, or at least a person is commenting for the first time. Welcome. Paul is here. Um, and he said, you know, Paul, I was my first captain when I started shooting for Guyana. He was the first captain. And he's saying here, He's in the schoolyard. He's anxious to learn how oh, they, they miss a car. 88 rounds five. We're going to talk about that a little while. Paul was my first, first captain in the Guyana National Rifle Association. An outstanding rifleman. Outstanding. One of the best guy I ever produced. Then we have my squad mate, Carl from Arizona, is here. 
the Lula is in the house. Duan, Family Music, my, my squad mate, Doreen from Canada, Vibert from Isma, Jerry is here, Daniel is uh, very much here, Lawrence um, is in the house, Clarence, the Raymond, Lawrence, followed by Clarence. Then we have Ulrich, my 955550 is uh, here. Um, well, before Rohan, the one and only Rohan, Leon Schwartz is here. John Rogers is here as usual. Desri from um, Georgia is in the house. Cecile Winston from California. Trevon, uh, Trevor from New Haven, Connecticut. Melvin or uh, Melville is in the house. Welcome on all. Then we have Rhonda, uh, Devian, Monica. You see how many people are here? All of these people are here before we went live, you know. Uh, Anthony came in at 9.40. Then Philip. Then from the Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands, Michael Brown, ex-sergeant. Kerry came in. Gordon 6659, Gordon from Canada is here. YouTuber is in the house. David Lindo. Chetred is here. Cranston. Denise. John. Terence from Canada, 9795, reporting for duty. Jay, I can't recall seeing Jay Charm before. Uh, Vibert, another Vibert. This is Vibert John. Chilo is in the house. Uh, Ezzy or Easy, whoever you want to call it, is here. Written in school yard, is here. Marvin is here. Uh, Valietta. Julian. I, I knew a Julian Elliot uh, uh, back in my early primary school days. I don't know if it's the same person. Let, 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 let me know. Uh, Jacqueline is here. Um, Brennan. Sandra. Bonita. Bonita is from West Coast Maurice. Um, she's in the schoolyard, 16308. Heather is here with us. From the UK, we have Orin. Then we have Speaking Truth to Power is in the house. Colin. After speaking to the couple, we have Colin. We have a cousin of mine, Yasin Slow. He's out of Trinidad. Um, then we have Denise Knights. Then followed by another Denise Collison, Bart. Then we have Sandrine. Then we have Wilfred. And then when we went live, Joan came in first, followed by Bonita again, uh, followed by Stan, Rahim, uh, Monica. And the list goes on and on and on. We can't continue us. We can do roll call all day. And we want to really get into it to bring you the information. Let me make the announcements. And then I'm going to bring in Mr. Conway. I think we you know we start first with a sad announcement. And we um, did announce the death of Sergeant Vaughn. And I think we have so we, we, we are compelled to update you. Uh, uh, what transpired uh, this a few uh, issue yeah we have a little bubble day just now at least at my end it was showing now um we get it announced regretfully the death of um he passed away uh recently in the u.s and they say the arrangement is a um, funeral service. Well, you know, there'll be a service in Brooklyn this Saturday, March 23rd, uh, from 3 to 7 p.m. at Gorino Funeral Home, to 922 Flatlands Avenue, Brooklyn. And then the final celebration will occur in Guyana at, from, at Belladrum on the second, um, the part two is on the 6th of April at Belladrum. Well, yeah, you know, I, I knew Wyatt very well. Uh, we I were at the TSU. For a number of years, where I played cricket, I think it's um, North Coast cricket uh, for the police team. And Wyatt was one of the men from the G from the G House. Uh, a, a fellow, a man, a fellow from the G House called me during last week to tell me, remind me that it was Wyatt, Albert Connell, Sex Bagot, 81, 69. You had people like Zizo, Campbell, um, and, and many, many, many of those guys, many Pablo Yewood. Um, Ballers, the inspector, but Dan Ballers, all of those men were from G House in the TSU. And for those of you who don't know, I'm sure um, people like Terence and those people know when we talk about the G House in the TSU um, back in those days, 
what they are talking about. So Wyatt was a regular um, in the GOs, and the GOs wasn't only confined to members of the TSU. The GOs was, con was uh, open to all who wanted to participate. So Wyatt passed, and then the next passing that I want to announce is the passing of um, favorite, Tony favorite, my squad mate, 93-98 favorite passed away recently. You know, I announced on this program that we had our 50th anniversary, that's Coast 74, and those in Guyana had a um, get-together on the very 1st of March this year. And Tony was there very active and participating with the group. So when we learned a few days ago that Tony passed, you could imagine the shock that we all got. You could imagine the shock that we got. Tony claimed to fame when we were in training school, we were all boxers. We were all boxers. And then Tony left. I can't remember how long he lasted. But his parents, mother and father, had a thriving Dalpuri business. I think they used to operate mostly by Plaza Cinema. They were well known. And Tony left and he took over that business out of Rasville. And Tony was very, very popular. Uh, I think there's a letter in today's people. By Elder Green. And he talked about Tony. So even when um, you, you uh, I'm back on now, but let me know if during the past couple of seconds there was a bubbling or so. Let me let me um let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um boxer and I forget Daco Cummins, all of those men who are people from the, the um from the the, the, the place there. On my end, it's showing from time to time. I am bubbling. I don't know if it's coming over like that, but I will continue to speak. And if at any time um, you miss me, just let me know and I will perhaps repeat what I said. So Tony passed away, very popular Dalpuri man. Very popular. Supply Dalpuri um, to many, many establishments, uh, prominent establishments around the um, town. So Tony passed away uh, recently. And um, I don't have the arrangements here, but I think 27th and 28th, I understand that they will be wait. And um, the, I think he's got it confirmed. I'll let you know um, what is the, the arrangement. And so as I say, the audio is glitching here. So I, I suspect it so because I see I'm getting that in the infamous circle going around from time to time. So yes, um, there we have it. And then, you know, there were um, a few other passings. Um, that of ex um Charles Lynch is his regulation number was 8937. Um, I did did not know him, but I got a message that Charles passed away recently. They said that he used to be stationed in what was then E and F division, primarily in the Marble Room um, area. So, um, former TSU man, and the TSU had a dedicated guard uh, for him. Uh, so, ranks would rotate every week. Um, Arlie Quinn was one of those uh, persons on the guard. So he passed away recently and um, was buried sometime um, last week. I want to say condolences to all those, the relatives, friends, uh, those persons who um, passed away and hope they rest in peace, their life, uh, live their life fully. And you know, we say when the time comes, we all have to go. Um, the next, uh, what next? Oh, then we have the death of Sergeant Vaughn to talk about. But we're going to come back to that in a more substantive way. I don't want to just gloss over it. So the next thing I want to announce is the, the bodies. More uh, up here announcement. We have belated body greetings to Woman Assistant Superintendent Diane Black, 
She celebrated the birthday recently. Retired Chief Inspector Dan Blair on the birthday. Spooky on the birthday recently. Um, then we have my squad mate, 9546 Kenrick Rouse. He celebrated his 72nd uh, birthday recently. So congratulations to all those who celebrated birthdays recently. And I hope that the good Lord will continue to bless and keep you so that you can enjoy many, many more more days. Uh, let me bring you Mr. Conway. Good morning. Good morning, morning, morning. Morning. I'm ha happy to be in the land of the living. I wish to congratulate those persons who passed the, another milestone. And um, I know Charles Lynch very well. We worked together at, I think when I was a sergeant at the Bamalai police station, I was in the middle of Mazaroon, he was there. And then you work at Kaikan, and I think after you retire, he opened a shop at Kaikan on, on, on the border there. You know, and I saw him a couple of months ago. I went to a funeral at Hoktong with school's board. That's where he's from. And we had a nice little talk, but I know that that would have been the last conversation between us. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and folks, bear with us because we're having some issues. I think it has to do with the waifu. So um, the gremlins are at work, but we'll continue to bring you the information. The gremlins are at work. And I said, um, the first issue we want to discuss this morning is the a follow up to the death of Sergeant Vaughn. Sergeant Vaughn was shot and killed. And they said, um that the what the, they the, the, the gave her let me say because at the time the crime chief was reported to say that bond was one of the officers from a specialized joint services unit that were deployed in pursuit of prison escapee wong akim uh, uh, young who escaped from the mazaruni prison he was serving 15 years for rape he escaped and according to release one was a and that is what is um the crime chief is reported to have said that Vaughn was one of the officers on a specialized joint services unit that was deployed in pursuit of prison escape one Then we learned, I think it was last um, Tuesday, that this uh, sergeant was shot and killed. And then the release said that it was accidental and unintentional. That is what they said. Um, but I don't know. Let me, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this to you. The postmortem was performed on Friday last. And even before the postmortem, there was a voice note circulating on social media, which suggested that Vaughn had three gunshot injuries. Well, if he has three gunshot injuries, a lot of questions are raised immediately. The first question that I would like to ask is, if um, you say this is accidental, so what firearm was used? That was not stated then, and I don't think it has been stated up to now. So a man is shot, a police sergeant is shot and killed accidentally by one of his colleagues. Um, that is what is being said. They have not told us what weapon was used. Important, because if it is that you're saying three shots, then something must be wrong, unless it's an automatic weapon. Let me understand clearly, unless it's an automatic weapon, it is difficult to justify three shots. And let me explain what I mean by that. As I told you, Students long ago that I just bear with us. Yeah, I was probably a while ago. So I was saying I know a little about guns. So we're saying that if it's a revolver, it's difficult to explain three shots. It was a pistol, similarly. If it is a tree, you can explain the difference. When you have a revolver, every time you want a um, shot to fire, you have to squeeze the trigger, release, squeeze, and release. Every time you squeeze and release, the shot is fired. If it's a semi-automatic um, pistol or rifle, something similar, you squeeze and you release. If you keep squeezing and you hold the trigger, only one round will fire. But, however, if it's an automatic firearm, once you squeeze the trigger, 
and you continue to apply pressure to the trigger and there are rungs in the magazine, the weapon continue to fire until the magazine is empty. So it's automatic. So I don't know how, if you were armed with a pistol, a revolver, or a semi-automatic, oh, three shots, that's what they said. Is that I'm saying that? That is what they said. And it brings us to a lot of questions. I made a note of some of these questions. Uh, I asked the question, what kind of firearm was um, used? They haven't said that. And that needs to be explained. And then I'm going to tell you the PM report. I'm going to the PM report. And then we are still unclear of the details which led to the death of the sergeant. All they said that he was part of this specialized joint services group and he was accidentally shot. No further details. No further details have been food, details have been forthcoming as far as I'm aware. And I've been monitoring to see what really um, transpired. We didn't hear anything. Uh, then we did. They, 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 um, you know, there's a lot of questions because we have this um, this PM report, and you know, let me say this again: training, experience. I happen to have been fortunate to go through the FBI Academy. Although you have shooting incidents, and you want to establish the facts, certain things like trajectory of the bullet. In other words, you would establish um, the, the, the the position of the shooter in relation to the deceased. Was the shooter standing? Was the deceased standing? Was the shooter lying down? Was it all of these things? The, 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 the entry, the trajectory of the entry of the bullet into the body will determine all of that. Well, you know, in this place, we get we get a post-mortem report, and they will say cause and death. And I show you all just so because I have the copy of the post-mortem report. Don't ask me how I get it. But I got a copy of the post-mortem report, and what I saw there is some something that I, I would always say appalling. Appalling, I will show you it. Stay tuned. In the meanwhile, let me get the like and let me get the love. You're not showing me it, so I'm gonna show you just now. And I said there are lots of questions to be asked. Lots of questions. And let me show you this PM report that I am talking about. Let, where do I have it? Uh, one moment. One moment. I'm gonna show you a part of the PM report. A part of, look, look at this um thing that tell me, Mrs. Conway, and others look at it. You see that part that is circled in blue? That is what it said, the cause of death. And, and, and look carefully, G-U-N-S-I-H-T, injuries, is gun, G-U-N-S-I-H-T, injuries, that is the cause of death. And that is signed by the pathologist. I didn't show you the whole report because yes, there's some details there I don't believe that should be made public. So I'm trying to be as responsible as I can. And I'm showing you, look and see what they have there. Let me bring in Mr. Conway, man. Mr. Conway, look, 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 look. I, I, look. I, I, I saw it too, and um, I think it has been, I had a, a view of it be, before, you know. And I don't sound the, the, the cause of that at all. Uh, gun sight injuries to abdomen. I, 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 really, I really don't know whether it were three, three bullets you know, to the left side okay. and the right side. And, you know, it's it's appalling, Paul. It's appalling. Well, nothing like that is mentioned, you know. In, on the postmortem report, they didn't say how many um, gunshot, uh, well, how many wounds they were. All it says is gun, G-U-N-S-I-H-T. And the second word is seem to be injuries uh, to abdomen. That is what it says. That is what it says. This is a postmortem report. For sergeant who was killed under certain suspicious circumstances, that is what they're saying. So this document now is likely to find itself into some legal proceedings, and that is what it says when you ask, "What was the cause of death?" The cause of death, according to the PM report, is gun, G U N S I H S I H T injuries. Comrade, you can't make these things up, and that is why I continue to lament the fact. That people, and you know, only the police, as we can see, because I don't think it's the police wrote this. I don't think so. Might very well be, but I don't think so. People have got to be more careful. People have got to be more careful when you're dealing with these documents. Right? Got to be more careful. Cause of death. Cause of death. Look what they have here as a cause of death. Now, let me go on to ask some more questions about, in terms of the same um, matter. Because, as we said, 
the this um shooting incident stem according to the release was a part of this giant servicing team um pursuing this man um who had escaped from the Mazaruni prison uh and i say aki wang there's a follow-up he was shot and killed by giant services group that was until him now when the release was made the first thing that struck me i don't know if the police corporate communication unit release it or who else release it but they said that this man was um uh, they saw him they saw this escapee and of course he was also the suspect in the double murder of the woman and her son and the giant services team pursuing this man the man saw them and the man attacked them with a cutlash machete for those of you who don't know what cutlash is in the country we just say cutlash but it's the same thing the man attacked them the man attacked a giant services group with a cutlass and he was shot and killed but what i found disappointing too well i should not have been because these releases sometimes they make no sense is that the gdf officer who led this contingent is named in the in the release a major something i'm not going to call his name here but the major name is given in the release as period in this operation right and i said what why would you want to give out the name of the people not only the major but the other persons on this operation that shot and killed an escapee you you they're, they're just exposing people to unnecessary dangers you name the officer uh, Unnecessary. The internet is what we are really back. The internet was bubbling a while. So while the seat bubbling, rather than continue speaking, I will wait until it clears up. I, I was saying they I, they they listened, uh, uh, they made a list of the items that was found on the um SKP's body after he was shot and killed. So one cutlass. Four thousand seven hundred dollars. Three SIM cards. And this guy in the currency. Three SIM cards. One flash drive. And me. It's a question here too. I want to know what is the position with the prison officers. At least one officer we were told were arrested. Um, some assistants to pretend that the prison was arrested. What is the position uh, uh, with them? Also, I would like to ask on behalf of my students, they said then a thorough investigation will be, uh, will be done. So I want to know um, what well, they, they did say to after a thorough investigation was promised, and also a thorough investigation was promised when condemned prisoner Roy Dan William Smalley was escaped in May last year. They promised a, a report. I don't think that has been forthcoming um, as yet. And they said uh, on Akim Wong's uh, body deceased, that was shot and killed. They found a cell phone. They said they found a cell phone. I hope they are going through that cell phone or at least they seek assistance in going through that cell phone to Ghana whatever evidence they might find in that cell phone, whether he was aided in his escape, whatever conversation, because one suspects, therefore, based on what's going on, um, well, you can't be sure whether he had the phone, he acquired the phone after he escaped, because remember he was on the run for a month, or whether the phone belongs to the people he killed. All of those things should be investigated thoroughly. All of those things should be investigated. And here, let me say, when you investigate those things, the public has a right to know the public has a right to know. But I'm not going to hold my breath. Let me bring in Mr. Conway for him to have his say uh, on this. CC, what, what do you say? What do you say about all that I've just said, my brother? There, 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 are, there are so many things here, you know, so many unanswered questions. First, I am not convinced <laughs> whether or not is he killed those two persons. I'm not heard of any connecting evidence, any evidence putting him on the scene. 
apart from what I heard, um, statement is said from a, a, a uncooperative statement from a, from a sixteen year old, who six or six years old, who was hiding under the bed and when things happen, and who was very um, who, who, who knew to use a telephone, a cell phone, to make a voice call to to his father's friend. You know, I don't know what kind of investigation they did at, at, at that, that crime scene or if there were more than one crime scenes where you know it is said that he yet food he drank vodka he used a cutlass they did they, they, they dust for fingerprints they did check the vodka bottle to see if you get fingerprints did they use a glass or a cup did they check those things did they check the cutlass did they did they did they do do proper processing of, of that crime scene to see whether they can find any any, any evidence, any forensic or evidence to connect him with the thing. I, 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 I'm I not certain whether, whether or not the, the, the thing can be brought to a close. You can't say this is an open and shut case for the, for the double murder. But you know, I'm not convinced whether or not it is he who, 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 who killed kill those, those persons. All because uh, we they, we don't have information in terms of what was done at the crime scene after the murder was 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 discovered, and even the things that that he that he found that they found on him, are, are they connected to Saxakali? Are they connected to the persons who died? No, we, we I I really really don't know. Not not certain, Paul, in terms of um the whether or not it is he who committed the double murder. And then when we look at the, the, the action of the police, perhaps the, 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 the instructions they had was to um, search and kill. Not, not to search and arrest. But they said dead men, dead men don't, don't talk. They don't have the uh, specialized unit. They, they, they don't have the, uh, they don't have the, 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 um, the ability to, 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 to arrest persons. And then here they're really saying that he, 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 have I have seen the 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 the, the ranks them. He rushed out of the bush with a cutlass, threatening them. Any reasonable person or one suspect, if you see the police or the joint service looking for you, you go deep in the bush or you freeze. Would you rush out like a madman and and and, and go and attack attack the people? You know? So many things going wrong, you know. But let me stop it for a while. Yeah, folks, I have, again, let me apologize for the quality of the audio. Um, it was very intermittent, but I show you gather what Mr. Conway was saying because I saw some people making uh, comments on it. Um, it's beyond our control. Uh, I see somebody rebuking them for stop messing with the signal. Well, we're going to give you the information. We're going to do what we have to do to um, give you the information. Uh, let me say this. Let me say this. When they come up, when you have these incidents, fatal incidents and other incidents, you have to come up with something that sounds credible. Because when you tell people, and again, let me, before I say, let me say, that is where credibility comes in. Because the Police Cooperate Communication Unit or the Police Cooperate Propaganda Unit does not come across as a credible unit. So when you come up with a statement now to say that having seen the Giant Services men who were in pursuit of him, I suspect these people are armed with um, rifles and all of that because you're gonna expect the giant services team going in there, especially the soldiers, are not gonna get shotgun and pistol and revolver. They have assault rifles. The policemen who are there, because I saw a picture where Ben Robson, Ben, the Minister of Home Affairs, was speaking to them at Saxakali, and they said that before they were deployed to go, a policeman seems to have been from the SWAT team and they had what appeared to be AR-style rifles. So you're telling us that having seen this, this man was suicidal, so he, he attacked the giant services. It might very well have happened that way. It might very well. But when you lack credibility and you give that, you give that type of release, nobody with sense believes what you say. And again, it comes all down to credibility because over the years, you have been telling people so much rubbish that even when you come up with something, that's supposed to be true. People are not going to be believe you. And this, this, this Nancy story that they gave here, the big, the, the big issue is that when you start a story like this, and we did that in the country when I was a small boy, 
when you start a story like this, you have to preface it by saying Moriddle, Moriddle, Marie. You know the thing? You know the thing? Moriddle, Moriddle, Marie. That's how you have to preface it. Some people know that you're coming up with a fairy tale. They know that you're coming up with a fairy tale. So again, let's wait to hear what the report will be. And I, I, I make the point again, I'm going to repeat it, that the Police Corporate Communication Unit is very, very irresponsible when you're going to release the name of the GDF officer who was in charge of the operation that led to the death of this escaped prisoner. You are being very irresponsible. And you're exposing that officer to, to, to danger. This is guy in a small society. And then when you look at it, I'm not going to the ethnic, the ethnicity part, because when you read the report, you will see that. When you read the re release that they gave, you're going to see that. And I'm saying that it's very irresponsible and insensitive to the environment in which we live to have named the officer in charge of the operation that led to the death of this prisoner. But nothing that they do um, will, will, will surprise me. Nothing. But I'm just saying, because we know they're listening. We know that they listen. And we know that some, perhaps some of the ones in authority will try, try to rein them in. So let me understand that. But let me move on. Let me move on. When I gave notice for the, this program yesterday, I said Gonna talk about is this recent special? Yes, folks. When you see the past days, because at my end, I know that the, the internet is not cooperating. So rather than just talk and you not in what I'm saying, I'm gonna pause until it gets back on. Like it uh, as... right. So I said in the notification we're gonna talk about this um, shooting by the ransom special brand. And let me say what um. The, the releases. That is the release given by the police. They says OPR investigating alleged shooting incident at Republic Park, East Bank Demerara. The, the story is the Office of Professional Responsibility is currently investigating an alleged shooting incident at Republic Park, East Bank Demerara on Monday night, March 11, committed on Sergeant 20409 Ronald Payne of Providence Police Station by ranks attached to the special branch. The special branch grants a sergeant, a corporal, a lance corporal, and two constables were at the time assisting regional police division number three ranks in the investigation of an alleged robbery murder. And they were looking for a dark color Toyota Rumian car that the suspect had used as a getaway vehicle. Sergeant Payne was driving home from work in his dark colored Toyota Rumian at around 22, 10 hours when he was stopped by the ranks who opened fire in the air and ordered him to stop. Sergeant Payne, who was unaware that the ranks were special ranks operatives, became terrified and drove to the Providence Police Station. The ranks also went to the Providence Police Station and were subsequently placed under close arrest. The firearms were seized. Crime scene technicians processed the scenes and recovered several spent shells. The police ballistic department is examining the spent shells and firearms. There were no injuries or property damage during the incident. Now, let me unpack that. Let me unpack that for you folks. This is an operation conducted by the police special branch. This is what they say. First of all, let me go through bit by bit. They say um, it's the OPR is currently investigating an alleged shooting. What, what, what alleged shooting? Wasn't there a shooting? There was a shooting. There was no alleged shooting. But they're saying alleged shooting. So I don't know alleged shooting. And then they go, to, go on to say they were at the time assisting regional police division number two ranks in the investigation of an alleged robbery. And they were looking. Since when police uh, special branch assisting investigations? Since when? I'm going to talk about it. Then Sergeant Payne was driving home from work in his dark colored Rumian car around 22. They say, and hear what they're saying. Listen to this carefully. Let me read this back. 
Sergeant Payne was driving home from work in his dark color Toyota Rumion at around 22 10 hours when he was stopped by the ranks. That is what they're saying. He was stopped by the ranks who opened fire in the air and ordered him to stop. What were they saying? He was stopped by the, the ranks and then they opened fire in the air and ordered him to stop. This is the police corporate communication unit again. He was stopped by the ranks and then they opened fire and ordered him to stop. He was aware, so he, he went away. Well, let me, let, me, let me say this. Special branch is supposed to be the intelligence arm of the police force, and by extension, one of the leading intelligence arm of Guyana, special branch. We used to call it back in the day, men from the flat building. They're supposed to be um, doing uh, covert operations. In other words, they're about, and, and they, they, as we say, they're snooping and pudooping. They see who is Steve Mann, who is that, and then they pass it on to the other agencies in the force for them to action. That is how I know it. Special branch is supposed to be the intelligence arm, the undercover people, the spies, as you'd want to call them, in the country. So let me, let me, and they don't wear uniform. They don't wear uniform. Some of them don't even pass through training school. They have special um, training. When I joined, in 1974, I explained some time ago, our number, 9565 Fraser, was the last rank in training school. But the records will show that 90, the course 74 and also 90, uh, 9566 and 9577. So when you see that, you know that those two ranks would have gone to the special branch. That is how you know. You don't know them. They don't train with you. You don't know them. So according to, and let me point out the, the, to those people who are listening, the police officers in particular, people like the Minister of Home Affairs, Ropes and Ben, the Prime Minister who like to lie, Jerry Govaya, the National Security of um National, what is it? National Security Advisor. The role of the special branch is contained in Standing Order 50 of the Guyana Police Force. Standing Order 50. And it clearly spells out the role of special branch. Among the things special branch are supposed to be doing, they collect information of an in, um, intelligence, a security nature. Security nature, they collect inf information on that. They, 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 they're supposed to enforce the Alien Act. Act dealing with aliens, that's a special branch responsibility, according to the standing order. Um, they're supposed to investigate applications for nationalization. So if somebody from one of the countries, Commonwealth countries in particular, come and they apply to be a naturalized Guyanese, special branch supposed to investigate and put up the report to say who this, whether they recommend whether this person should be granted naturalization or not. They get certain and they investigate certain offenses of a security nature, certain investigations of a security nature. So if a, the national security is threatened by some incident, and that is nonsense, well, the, 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 the extended squad to tell you about cybercrime being the threat. Real security is incident, special branch will investigate. They are also um, responsible for personal protection. So you have VIP. And when you say personal protection, we're not talking about ministers of the government. We're not talking about the president, the prime minister. They have their own personal security. But when you have visiting dignitaries, such as heads of states and heads of government, special branch has a role. I know when I was with a cricket, and you have to have um, bodyguards or close protection officers for the cricket teams and the match officials, special branch will provide those people who are trained to, 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 to function in that capacity. They also um, supposed to invest background, the background for report, put up background report for forced applicants and firearm applicants. So when a person applies to join the police force, special branch had a responsibility to go and check they go into the village, they check to see your background. They go to the school that you attend. They go to the church to find out what is known and they put up a report with recommendations. So you know, proper background. I suspect that is not going on now. Given the type of people you get in the force, perhaps no proper background check is not done. Or if they're doing the background check, background check the people who are doing it are not competent. They are not competent to do a proper background check. They're also supposed to do a background check for persons who apply for firearm license. You apply other persons or companies applying for firearm license, special branch has a responsibility to investigate those things. And then 
it is instructive to note that the very standing order made the point that, you know, we said, I said earlier that they investigate um, certain offenses of a security nature. And that same standing order will tell you, I made a note, except as laid down in that para four, except as being responsible to investigate um, matters of a security nature. Here what it says, special branch will not be charged with investigating and prosecution of crimes. Any evidence which comes to the notice of special branch of the commission of any crime will be handed over to the CID headquarters or to the senior officer of the police division. That is what the role is. That is what the role they collect. Crime um, take a place, they pass it on. Because there are several issues to be addressed. I'm gonna bring in Mr. Canary a short while. Because um well, let me in terms of the role, let me let me bring in Mr. Conway for him to um say something. Mr. Conway, over to you on the role in the special branch. And then okay. I'm gonna bring the actual issue regarding the shooting. But let me hear you. Okay, um let me put it in in, in another way. I mean you were very clear in terms of what is standing out or mentioned. But every country is entitled to of course an agency or or a specialized agency to provide accurate, insightful, objective, and relevant intelligence to inform decisions on natural on national security and assets. And if you look in the America, in America they have Homeland Security, they are the National Security Agency, they have the FBI, CIA, and others. England get MI5, 6, 7 more people say M15, M16, M17. Canada get like Canadian Security Intelligence Service. Russia got the KGB, you know that the Federal Service, the Federal Security Service. And Israel got two, one Shinbet, which is which is which deals with internal security, and Mozan, which for me is the number one in the world, that deals with external security. Now, and when you're coming back in back into Guyana. There are several agencies that provide intelligence to the government. The police, we have the, like the, Intel, the Hinterland Security Agency, the, Intern, in the Hinterland, Hinterland Intelligence Committee. We got a regional intelligence committee. I'm not really giving away anything, but it's known, special branch. We had a joint intelligence committee. We had a one time central intelligence committee. And this one, which Nandala is trying to make to give legal status, the NISA. National Intelligence Security Agency. I think he he, he sent a bill to the select to Parliament, the select committee. I think they're looking at it and it's like very there for over months. So the special branch really is to do what we call undercover work. They're not to be involved in operational work. No way, no way involved in operational work. If they got information, pass it on to the operational people. But you see, they, they don't have a unity of command in, in, in the top of the Ghana police force. We have divisional commanders and divisional branch commanders who hold in position as assistant commissioner. And they're all assistant commissioners. So perhaps they, 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 they don't have the kind of unity that, that they have. They want to you know best the others. Special guns say they couldn't find the car and I find the car and, and, and this kind of thing, you know. And then Maybe maybe what's was right when you say he ain't taking order from Bodrum or he ain't taking order from, from Brutus. Because normally special branch will report directly to the commissioner. And special branch would have equal ranks like they are like they are, 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 are the department. So you know the, the, whole, the whole thing is 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 this unity at the top level. This unity they had in the administration, the operation the special branch, the, the, the CID, SUKU, and all of that. And perhaps the government got to take some blame too because they ain't making nobody, you know, assistant commissioner, senior in, 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 in coming up there. They're all, they, they're not making people deputy commissioner. They're all assistant commissioner. They're all on the same rank, the same rank. So nobody can't give nobody, no, 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 no order. And the thing got to be clear, special branch must deal directly with the commissioner police not admin or op operations and 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 you know the if the police are around structure Budram assistant commissioner blanham assistant commissioner 
Brutus Assistant Commissioner, Watts Assistant Commissioner, Karen Bash Assistant Commissioner, and again many others. So nobody can give nobody no 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 order. There is no deputy commissioner apart from Paul Williams who's going to come out next next month end. So the if the president feels that they're working so hard and he say even he go overseas, people just talk about the work of the police there. Why can't he promote them? Why, why, why can't he promote But then he, he, he has problem promoting them because among, among the top level people there, some have serious, some are uh, um, allegations that some are involved in serious corruption, financial irregularities. Serious financial irregularities. One, if they if they make him a, a deputy commissioner, he's gonna have like green air, air the United States gonna take away visa because of his association with certain business people. One, 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 one can find actionable intelligence and a whole host of other things. So if the president is in a quad mile, he know who really for thing, but they got some good men. They had like a Paul Williams, they got the one sitting at um a division, McBean, and some others who are very good assistant commissioner, but the pretenders, those are head, at headquarters. They, they're vying for position, they're jockeying position, and there's a lot of this unity going on. And special branch getting involved in operational matters. Operational matters who operation. Special branch must do undercover work and pass it on to the relative authorities, and they want to say peeping to see whether or not any action was taken. If you don't do that, chaos is going to think. And, and surprisingly, and I don't know, it's a good thing that that, that sergeant wasn't armed because if people in the car being him find 80 something wrong for him and he was armed ashore, he's going to shoot back. He might have killed some of them or they might kill him, you know. So the, the, the whole thing was, 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 was a tragedy. And I hope that real condemn action be taken against those persons who organize it. All right, again, let me apologize to the little the quality of that uh, presentation there by Mr. Conway. Um, I know you're going to be with us. But let me say this. Let me say this. We have been I, um, telling you for a long time of the disunity that is um, evident um, in the police force. This incident that we are speaking about highlights the real disunity at the top. The highlights where um, whether the ranks were under close arrest and it is reported that one Marcy had taken order from this body, only the, he only reports to the president and the commissioner. That shows this unity because even, even if that were so, if you add unity at the top there, Amaga calls it, Amaga, look, let, let, let me, how are we going to deal with this? And that is what you had. That is what you would have. The fact, I, I, I agree that the fact that everybody gets the same rank by cast some issues. But it's deeper than that. It has to be an ego thing. Mr. Conway, you would note that when I was there as the senior assistant commissioner, all of us had the same rank, and we never had them issues. We never, ever had those type of issues, even though there was no deputy commissioner for a period of time. We were all, there was a commissioner, and we had a set of assistant commissioners, and we never had them problems because we knew how to relate to each other. We never had those problems. But then people ego getting involved. But let me say this. You see, that special branch, they, I believe, is the wrong person to be in that unit. The wrong person to be in that unit. But they decided to put him there. So when you get these problems, you got to accept the blame because he didn't pick himself up and go there. And my understanding is that Watts is in charge of Special Branch and the second in command is Superintendent Triple Jumper, Prem Narayan, a man who promoted from inspector to superintendent is there. So what do you expect? And let me remind you that this is not a force operation, um, with what we call blotched operation with Special Branch. With the Quinden Bacchus killing, on the East Coast in 2022, the special branch ranks were involved in that too. The man who is charged with the murder is a special branch rank. The man whose name is calling in our Sergeant Singh, he was a corporal then on that operation. 
And the information is that they were told to leave his name out of the um, report and all of that. So here it is again. He is now spearheading this operation, and a man um, is there. On the East Coast with Quinton Bacchus, we understand they were another inspector in charge. The other guys, including uh, McLennan, who was never at the scene, end up getting charged or something. And again, special branch, I say, you have the man what's in charge, and therefore when you get these problems, you can't, um, you can't expect anything less than problems and chaos. This special branch, this government, the PPP government, since they came into power in 1992, they have always been trying to get their people in charge of special branch. I say that without any fear of contradiction. The men who were there in charge, they couldn't penetrate them when they wanted to get information on this body and information on that body. Because as we said, the special branch is your, is your, your spy agency. And they had, or perhaps still have information everybody. And I know a particular minister who wanted to know, uh, wanted to see his file that the special branch had on him. That's before he became minister. And if you said, no, we're not going to do that. And what they did, they changed and changed and changed the other special branch until I understand that they got what they wanted. People in their, one of their primary role, especially in a situation where you have all of these crimes in Guyana. They're supposed to be there trying to penetrate, infiltrate the drug groups, the criminal groups, so they can get information as to who these criminals are, how these things are going to work, and, and, and so. But they're not doing that. They're not doing that. They're doing the biddings of their political masters. And that is why we're going to continue to have um, issues. And let me say this. Let me come now to the, the um, actual shooting. It is said, according to them, let me go back to the report, that according to the police corporate propaganda unit, Sergeant Payne was driving home from work in his dark colored Toyota Rumion at around 22 10 hours when he was stopped by the ram. So they stop him. That's what they say. They stop him. And then they said they open fire in, a, in, in the air in order to stop him. And then the police corporate communication unit said several spent shells were recovered. No way, several spent shells. I, I warn you, students, that once you get those things, a number of several, uh, uh, and so on, look, look out, is it, the cock they bring into you. And I can't tell an old officer of mine, Joseph Oswald Sam, he said, they're giving you, and they're not even using a little grease. They're giving it raw. That is it. I, I, I was several spent shells. And then later on, it was said that 88 spent shells were recovered. I'll tell you all of those something about guns. So if you have five operatives, as the release said, I am assuming that they were armed with pistols. Special branch rank, you don't expect them to run around there with rifles and so on. So I'm assuming, it's not always good to assume, but in the absence of the information from them, I'm going to assume that they were armed with pistols. If they were armed with pistols, most of the pistols that I know of, the, ma the, the, the magazine capacity will be around 15 rounds. 15 rounds, you can get one up and 15, so you can carry 16 uh, as a case with me. Now, if you have 15 rounds and you have five men shooting in the air to stop this car, the fact that 88 rounds were fired, can I remember 15 fives are 75. We are no Matt's mama, we know the sums. 15 fives are 75. It means that they have somebody, one or more persons have to reload. One or more persons have to take out an empty magazine and insert the magazine with rounds for 88 rounds to be fired. Because if all of them fired the 15 rounds from their pistols, it's only 75 rounds would have been fired. But they're saying that is 88 rounds were fired. And so therefore, the people must have reloaded. Must and here, I understand they deny now, but let me play you this clip again to, to tell you how many rounds. Um, this is what was said. Um, oh, shocks. Did I take out these things? All right, I'm going to show you it a little while. I, I might have taken out the clip. I want to show you all the particular clip. But let me go. I'm going to show it before I finish. So you had 88 rounds. Fired, account of them fire in the air. They fired 88 rounds in the air. So it's a war zone. 88 rounds in the air. I don't believe that. 
that they fired 88 rounds in the year. And Mr. Crush, Mr. Conway asked a pertinent question. Suppose this sergeant had been armed. Suppose he had been armed and decided to return fire. Yes, you'll get a bloodbath out there. Suppose the sergeant had a little skill in the use of a firearm and he had been armed. Obviously, the special branch rounds here get no skill. Got to fire 88 rounds. I, I, I can't see them firing 88 rounds in the air. They fire the car 88 rounds and they miss. Can't to what they're saying. Can't to what they're saying. 88 rounds and um, nobody else get touched or anything like that. No, I don't know. I know. Uh, let me show you the clip. I was looking the wrong place. Here. Let me show you this before I go on. Listen to this carefully. Is the next question. question. Next operation, question. But what is the standard? Next operation? question, Just Madam. I am not. I have when, not read the reports, and I'm but saying you said you're with the I am satisfied so far as to what was presented in the press mm -hmm. that 88 rounds were fired at a car. And they, nobody was injured, nor the car was struck. Does it bring into question the SOPs of the gun? The, I'm waiting for the review by the OPR and the commission police on that aspect of it. Yes. I'm not commenting further on the matter. But are the officers on the close? It yes. is, it is uh, getting the attention of the OPR. But can you confirm if your officers I'm not confirming place? anything. I'm telling you, it's under the OPR. How are you the dealing commission with the police? Who else has a question? Sir, Who else has a question? She has a question. Well, say it. Are you satisfied? Well, that is the Minister of Affairs, Robson Men, interacting with people, the, uh, members of the media. And you can see the man, the media. And I said this, I've been saying it um, several times before I said That alone tells you that this man is suitable for this position. That alone. That alone. I mean, he, sounds, he looks and he sounds frustrated. But if you're frustrated, as to what is going on every day, there's some incident in your ministry, either at the um, <clears throat> canoe drugs, tra police traffic department accident, um, shooting, prison, every day is something. If you are, are overwhelmed, do the honorable thing at Chuck. Tell them that you're tending your resignation. This thing is too much of you. But you go over there and you come across so unprofessional in your interaction with the media. And the minister said 88, I understand he walked that back at some stage and said he won't, um, he didn't say 88, but I played the tape there for you to hear what he said, 88. Coming back to the shooting, it is clear these men were shooting at a target that they did not know. They know the target, but it's just unprofessional and untrained people shooting. They don't know what they're shooting at. Because they're shooting well, they're saying the air. But no, there's no protocol to say that you shoot in the air. None. No protocol. Take that from me. There's no protocol. So they're shooting and they're shooting 88 rounds in the air. 88 rounds. Hope they make the pay for them rounds. They're shooting at an unknown target. And I asked you the question, what are they armed with? Because if they were armed with pistol, it meant that they had to reload. Enough time to think they had to reload. Um, and then we talk about the power play among the senior officers, right? The fiasco we followed with respect to the ranks being placed under close arrest. Five men involved, we understand the place five, instruction to release them. And then instructions, only three of them was the place under close arrest. The sergeant who was in charge, the same man, um, I think you can't remember his first name, saying is his last name, was a couple with the Queen and Barker killing. Same thing they do. Kept him out. He's in between Quinn and Baker killing in 2022, and now he's promoted to sergeant. I understand he's the one of them who deserve, must not be under those arrests, even though he was in charge of this operation. And a big um, fiasco um, among the senior people at the top. I, you can't order me. I can't take. I don't take order from the president and the, the commissioner of police. That is what transpired. How you expect when you behave like that? What type of discipline? What type of respect? Um, you, you see, that is why the thing is falling apart. This is we speak about that often, and this thing comes. Um, they, they manifest themselves so that you can see what we're saying um, is true. This unity, unprofessional conduct, are, are the people there, and then um, the OPR investigating. OPR, what part they investigating? The actual shooting? Uh, definitely, OPR cannot investigate the the the, the follow. From the shooting, where the assistant commissioners um, ridiculing and abusing one another, the OPR can't investigate that. OPR 
is uh, edited by a deputy superintendent, Baird, and we understand that the three assistant commissioners at Crosstalk and as to how this matter should handle. So what aspect, Mr. Baird, with the OPR, you told us, the, the media, and by extension, the country, that OPR in, is investigating. What aspect of this matter are they investigating? Are they investigating why the um, OPR, the, sorry, why the special branch is in, in charge of um, operation? Why are they carrying out um, overt operation? Is it that they're investigating? Are they investigating why they shoot? Let us know what aspect of this matter they are investigating. What aspect OPR, everything now is OPR. Every time there's an incident, OPR is investigating. The death of Sergeant Vaughn, there's an OPR investigating. Every time they have an incident, OPR investigating. That is, a, that is what they say. That is what they say, and then you hear nothing after that, nothing. Then um, to, to move on. I, I say, um, let me tell you all, as I said, we teach him what should have happened. I have a note here as to what should have happened in this thing. Let's assume that the special branch ranks were out there as claimed by the other special branch um, doing work. There's a robbery. The robbery took place at Vidunup, robbery murder, right? Took place at Vidunup. The message passed on that, look, um, there's a getaway car, so, so, so. The special branch ranks observe a car fitting that description. Come on, they can't attempt to intercept the car. First of all, they're just in plain clothes. They can't assist, uh, attempt to intercept or to stop the car. They have to report, normally, they would report to the either the duty officer or the other special branch himself. He would get on to one of his colleagues at the senior level and patrols that should be out will move to the area and intercept. In this case, uh, perhaps, um, Providence people come out and attempt to intercept the car. But again, so many things wrong with it. So you have people in civilian clothing, people, special branch ranks in civilian clothing attempted to intercept a car. That is what they say. They attempted to stop the car. That is wrong all over, wrong all over. You can be, no law allows you to do that because even if you come to the motor vehicle traffic act, it says, that you are compelled to obey instructions given by your five ranks from the special branch, dressed in civilian clothes, according to what they are saying, is trying to stop a car. My God, I can't understand what is going on in this Guyana police force. So it is wrong so all over. As I say again, they get information. They see a car that fits the description. They have to pass it on pass it on to one of the operations room or that. I know they got their own um, communication system. Pass it on to their headquarters. They're going to get on to somebody and, and they're going to move to intercept. In the meanwhile, they should be there observing and following the car to make sure that, um, they, 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 in other words, keep eyes on the, the vehicle so that whenever they patrol or whenever they come, um, communicate to them, they can tell them, get license plate number and all those everything. That is what should have happened. But they're going, fine rounds. They said the car stopped. This is what the OPR said. The car stopped. But you still find 88 rounds in the air to stop the car. That is what they say. Mr. Conway, please help, come in and help me out there. Mr. Conway? Yeah, you made a very important point, you know, in terms of the, the car. The car and the registration number? Or whether it's a false registration plate or, or, or not? And then one day, in contact with the West Demerara police, you know, they, they, they and they know because I understand if the, the getaway car was already in possession of, 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 of the police in, in, in West, West Demerara. And, and I just want to backtrack a bit, you know, because I'm, I'm tired of hearing this nonsense about um, a, a person being placed under close arrest. Close arrest has to do with the Police Discipline Act. In relation to Section 4, the offenses under Section 4, you, have to, you get 4A to Z. And here was Section 10, sir. Any member of the force may be placed under arrest A if he's under the influence of intoxicating liquor to such an extent as to be incapable of performing his duty 
B, if he commits any insubordinate act or uses any insubordinate or disrespectful language to a person in authority over him. C, if he willfully disobeys the lawful order of his superior. And D, if he strikes or attempts to strike any member of the force superior in a rank to himself. That is when close arrest comes into play. When is a criminal offense, is arrest full stop. You don't qualify that is arrest full stop. And then this thing was shooting in the air. Shoot, shooting in the air, I don't understand that. Um, and last week, I mentioned about the guiding principles in relation to the when you may fire. I'm going to repeat them again. I know my someone notice. I'm going to repeat them again. And the, and the guiding principle is for Salam of 23 of 69. It was republished several times. And this is where you got to drill in the brains they, 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 of, of your ranks. You're going to uplift weapons. They must know it like a recitation. They must internalize and conceptualize it. And let me repeat again, when you attack and you apprehend serious danger to your person and are unable to defend yourself by any other means. Two, when property you are ordered to defend is attacked and you are unable to safeguard it by any other means. Three, when an attack is made to rescue persons in lawful custody. Four, when anyone is found committing or about to commit a felony. Burglary, shop breaking, house breaking, arson, lasting, and does not desist after warning and cannot be deterred or pre or arrested by any means. Six, to prevent the police station or opposed from being overrun. There's five, sorry, and six, when so ordered by a superior rank. And I don't know, too, like the, the last one, more that to deal with riot units and another thing, because if, if, if the order is, is unlawful, you're not going to carry on the canton there, just shoot this money. You have to follow the guiding principles. And all this thing up in there, and they tell me they shoot out 88, 88 rounds. And nothing in the standing now that number 12 of 69 has covered them. I always mention that whenever you shoot, you jump, you go around and find some, um, the force of number 23 of, of 69. So I don't know how special brands get involved in and how they could get, get, get over this. It's, it's, it was a wild west. It's a wild west. Persons in plain clothes shooting at you. Persons in clothes shooting you. And I, I heard that 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 uh, they didn't come for the air. That like that that sergeant was hit twice. I don't know. One confirmed that he was hit twice, and they giving him money to cover up so that he shouldn't talk and he shouldn't men, 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 mention anything. You know, you can't trust the police force. You can't you can't trust them. Total madness. Total ridiculous. And and, and 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 all because the the confusion at the at the command level at the top there there is no synergy, as you rightly mentioned, Paul. When you when you when you were the senior man, assistant commissioner, we used to work together. We used to talk together. Sometimes we used to say, hey, "Take me partner now for you." We, we used to gang up together. When 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 there were serious issues that all the divisional command used to come together. Now this one pulling, this one pulling. All because they are pretenders and they want to become deputy commissioner, they want to become commissioner. So it's dog eat dog, and the country will suffer the kind of police force you saw because dog eat dog situation at the top. Of the dog eat dog situation, are you correct? Because I can tell you that when I was there, all of us have the same rank, and people call me some of the my fellow commanders, they encounter some issue. And they got a call. They respected me as a senior commander. And um, I would advise, well, maybe you'd want to do so, 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 so. I did not have all the answers. Sometimes I am, have the answer for the question they're asking. And then we we, we run Robin. And eventually we know that among the, the group, we're going to find the solution to the problem. That is how we operated. That is how we operated. When I took over my force command in 1993, West Demerara, Having spent all the years at the TSU, I went to West Demerara. I depended a lot on the guidance of the other commanders, people like Mr. Bombry, uh, Mr. Felix, and those. I, depending on them for guidance, something comes up, I will call to find out. You have Mr. Kasim and all of those. I will call them to find out how I should try, um, deal with a particular matter. And they will guide you. Now they can't do that because, one, a lot of the people who 
Please don't know. Yeah, we had a little more of a side pause. Yeah, they're going to mislead you. So that is what people are doing. What they believe is the correct thing, then it turns out to be something that is incorrect. But again, 88 ranks fired by five ranks from the special branch. And then, then according to what the release said, according to what the minister says, they did not strike the car, nor did they it has strike the driver. And people are asking the question, what if um, other persons, including children, were in that vehicle? Well, they'll strike it, so you ain't got no problem there. They can't shoot, so not do what have happened. Car, they missed the car, 88 rounds. And it brings us straight into the next issue that we're talking about. I mentioned it before. A lot of people running around with firearms. This is a clear example. And they don't know how to shoot the firearm. They don't know when to shoot the firearm. A lot of people, and I did say, I think it was last week, policemen and women, private security personnel, licensed firearm owners, even members from the armed forces, GDF, men run around with guns. And they are not properly trained to use those fire, the fire. Which brings us to the next point that I said with, um, in the notification yesterday, we'll address this morning. There is this murder. Yesterday morning, murder, alleged murder, an attempted suicide. That is what the police corporate communication unit said. An alleged murder. Now let me read what they say. This you gotta pay attention here because this is a real rigmarole story. And again, this is not this one. Well, it's not the police to be blamed, but you should really start this one. This is a Hollywood drama. This is a Hollywood uh, B class or C class or Z class movie. Hey, what it says here. Police are investigating an alleged murder that occurred at around one hours this morning, this yesterday morning, Tuesday, a dazzle housing scheme is Coast Dorara, committed on Ashanti Liverpool, a 25-year-old security officer by a 31-year-old security officer of Aslington East Coast Demerara. The suspect shared a common law relationship with the deceased woman's sister. Enquiries reveal that about 0, 0, 0, 0 hours this morning, the suspect went to the Hong Kong China. He met a 23-year-old security officer who is a co-worker, who at the time was armed with one AR-15 rifle and eight rounds of ammunition. The suspect told the security officer that the supervisor sent him to collect the rifle. The security officer mentioned that he made several calls to the supervisor via cell phone, which went unanswered. The suspect collected the firearm with ammunition and went away. The suspect had earlier gone to the girlfriend's home and saw her sitting inside a car parked in front of her house. As such, he left, went to Godot, and returned about 30 minutes later armed with an AR-15 rifle, where he entered the house and met Ashanti, who was at the home in bed. He asked about her sister's whereabouts, who had left the house a short time, a short while before he, the suspect, arrived. As a result, Ashanti ran outside, where she made her way out of the yard and started heading east along the access road when the suspect opened fire at or with the rifle. Ashanti continued running and collapsed in a nearby yard. The suspect then went on to his motorcycle and left the scene. There was a supermarket and industry railway in Bakhmet, East Coast, Demerara, where he met another colleague, a 29-year-old security officer, who at the time was what I'm with a one AR-15 rifle with six live matching rounds of ammunition. The suspect told his colleagues, his colleague, that he needed his help in clearing the rifle which he had in his possession because one rung was stuck in the firearm. The colleague collected the rifle from the suspect. The colleague collected the rifle from the suspect and attempted to clear it outside the supermarket, leaving his firearm inside the supermarket where the suspect was. While doing this, 
the colleague or the look on the ground, he went to say where he saw what appeared to be beside him. Control was summoned, blah, 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 blah. Now they got a lot of things here to unpack. There are lots to unpack. Now, the police say it's an alleged murder. I know it's an alleged murder. I thought it was a murder. They're using this word alleged like they don't know the meaning of alleged. It is a murder. It is a murder allegedly committed by a certain person. But to say that an alleged murder, what do you mean? The person is not there? What do you mean? The person committed suicide? The person died from jungle? It's murder. You have established that this man shot this woman. So it is a murder. It is a murder. And then they say, by a 31 year security officer of Aslington, I noted with some amount of joy and pleasure they did not mention the suspect's name because, you know, we were telling them all along when, when these incidents occurred, it is wrong for you to put the suspect's name or to release the name of the suspect when these people are not charged. You arrest a man in connection with some offense and you got the name all over the um, social media and elsewhere. And then what happens? The man is not charged. So the, the, you stigmatize the person. Like happened on that Rosal, where they arrested several persons for the murder of the mother and her son, and the name all, all the persons who were arrested, name in the media, day after day, social media, other media, day after day. But not other media, I think some of the other media houses were, were responsible enough not to carry the name. But we said it is wrong to put the name. So I noted with some amount of satisfaction and are taking praise. We are taking praise to this, that they did not mention the name of the suspect. But they should do that in every case. They should not be selective in, not, in, in, in this. You arrest a person, he's a suspect, he's not charged, the name should not be there in the media. When he is charged, then you can, you're free to say John Jones of so and so address was charged in respect of this matter. So it looked like they're learning, but they're learning curve, man. Oh, Lord, they're slow. And that, that slow doesn't have an E. It's S L O W, that's slow. Moving on. Again, corporate communication unit. I'm in a mood this morning, as always, to teach. They said the suspect shared a common role relationship with the deceased woman's sister. And quite revealed that a, about 0020 hours this morning. Can't be 0020 hours this morning. Because if you say 0020 hours this morning, you're implying that there's a 0020 hours this afternoon as well, which is not so. It really should have been at uh, this morning at 0020 hours, or on such and such a date at 0020 hours. But you can't say um, 0020 hours this morning. No, it don't work so. So we understand. And again, I say these releases are going out there for the world to see. The world to see. So, all right, all right. The man, again, bad, this bad construction. You know, I'm not no English teacher. I, I, um, I did English at uni when I was compelled to do English at UG, and um, I got an A in it. So I think I know a little bit. Miss Posad, she died recently overseas. Um, and he, I hear what they're saying here. He asked um, uh, or he asked her sister's whereabouts, who had left. So the whereabouts had left. The, he asked her sister's whereabouts, who had left her home a short while before. It should really read. He asked for the whereabouts of the sister who had left. Um, the house a short while before. But they make these things, they write these things, and they're coming out there, oh my Lord, it looks so bad. People, my people who I know uh, have always been pointing out this thing to me. What is going on? And this man they have there is uh, supposed to be an expert in communication, expert in propaganda. Um, Ramatar, Mark Ramatar, heads this unit. I could tell you before Mark Ramatar, we had some people in the police officers who were in charge of that unit and they didn't write this nonsense. You had people like um, Whitaker, Ivla Whitaker, retired assistant commissioner, Patrick Mentor, David Ramnarine, John Sires. Even when Ramla Khan was there, you didn't write all of this nonsense that they're writing. But you have these people writing a whole bond of tribute and get a whole set of money um, to doing it. But here they say now, this man went to the supermarket where his colleagues was, where his colleague was. I told the colleague that the supervisor say, hey, give me this gun. The colleague is claiming that he tried to get the supervisor. And having not, get the, having not gotten the supervisor, he hand over the gun to this man. I hope he's under arrest. I hope that he too is arrested. 
I hope so. Now, all right, he hand over the gun. The man go to the resident. He shoot the system. Again, remember an AR rifle? It's a semi-automatic rifle. Right? I, let, me, let me go to it right away. AR rifle. Why in God's name we have security companies issued with AR rifles to guard supermarket? Not only Chinese supermarket. But you have AR rifle, one of the most powerful um, rifles they have. AR rifle now has a reputation in the States as being the weapon of choice for these mass murderers. And not AR, AR style rifle. Because many times they refer to it as AR. AR really is for the company Armalite um, factory. Many of these things are not made by that factory, but it's the style, it's the AR style rifle. Why do we have private security companies issued with automatic, semi-automatic rifles, AR in particular, guarding supermarkets. Why do we have that? I hope that the authorities look into that. I hope that they do. But the AR rifle is a very powerful rifle. And that is that is even more reason why they should not be in those areas because what happens if um, people come to rob the place and the guard opens fire? Innocent people are likely to be injured or killed. Not only people are outside, but if it's it, 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 that bullet penetrates uh, a wooden house, it can kill people inside the house. So I don't know what type of assessment is being done when they determine um, the, or who makes the determination as to what weapons should be um, placed at the particular place. I know the, 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 the business owners will tell you they want armed security. And it's for you to make an assessment and to determine what armed security is. I know long ago, armed security is a pistol, a revolver, or a shotgun. Now you get AR rifles. AR rifles, a very powerful, powerful rifle. 223 ammunition, 556 five, ammunition, and you have it there. That thing is a devastating effect. I think the, 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 the massive velocity, I know a man there, you're going to have to help me with it. So, let me, uh, AR 15 um, rifle, depending on. When we talk about muzzle velocity, this is really, it has, in other words, the, the, the speed the bullet travels when it leaves the gun. And that is dependent on a lot of factors, including this type of bullet, the grain of the bullet, a lot of stuff. I don't want to go into all the technical terms now. But suffice it to say that an AR rifle is a very powerful rifle and is in no way it should be put in the hands of untrained people. And you want to tell this man untrained because it would appear that when he fire it, at the murder scene, like a jam. He didn't know how to clear a jam. In other words, the weapon either stuck in the breach or stuck in it. Some way, the thing stuck. And perhaps it's a good thing that it stuck. Because if it did not stuck in the weapon, chances are you would have killed more people then. Because remember the saying, this gun had eight rounds of ammunition. They did not say how many rounds were fired at the murder scene, but the weapon got stuck. So he then went to another supermarket. He went to another supermarket where he told his colleague, hey, this gun stop. I wanted to, you to clear it for me. This other colleague took it outside. And he left, he gone. <laughs> look, this thing, this thing, he left his gun inside. Went outside to clear this thing. Oh, he is under close arrest too. We're not close arrest. Oh, he's arrested too. Can the man kill himself with his gun? Well, he didn't kill, sorry, he didn't kill himself. He, he shot himself with his gun. Right? So I hope all these people, these two security guards, the one who gave him the first gun, that seems to have been the murdered weapon, is under arrest. And this second one, who gave the man, uh, or, who, or who left the gun close to this man, so the man can I hope he's under arrest. Now, we have been saying a long time that the private security companies in Guyana are out of control. They are out of control. They, 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 they get people, they give firearms to people who are not trained. They give firearms to people who are not legally authorized to carry these firearms. And this is the only one because the same release, let me, let me, let me go to the last part of the release. Um, but they, 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 some, there's some release that says that they, I don't think I have it here, that they, all the firearms from this company were the minister of Home Affairs, Robeson Ben, said that he instructed 
that all of the firearms from this company be seized and that a complete audit be done. That is what the minister is alleged to have said. But only this company. There are many other companies. The company with the man who um, discharged the wrong at border market, shoot himself and a person who was on standby, or was nearby. The one on the East Bank where the man is playing Russian roulette and end up shooting some laborer. We have the one on the a man guard in the supermarket where he shoot his foot. They have the one where in Eccles, where a man pumping shot in the air. All of these things need to be properly investigated. And these are the incidents I'm referring to occurred a long time ago, but you ain't nothing about it. So I ain't got much faith in the minister telling me that he has ordered that all the firearms from this company be seized and a complete audit be done. That is the correct action. I don't even know if the minister under the law has a legal authority to do so. And we're going to address that in a short while. But I did say on a previous program, and I think maybe the minister or that, that I was confronted as a command A division with a situation where a security company had given a shotgun to a man and it was reported stolen. And when we did the investigation, we discovered that the man to whom the shotgun was given wasn't authorized. And then I started an audit. I seized every single, it was revolver and shotgun from that company, every single one, and asked them to show cause why we should not revoke the license having regards to what transpired. And I said then, they called from all over Freedom, uh, Freedom House, all of them called me seeking to intervene for the man to get back his gun. And I remained firm. No, no, no. There's a process to be um, gone through. We have to satisfy ourselves. And during the course of that investigation, we found that they couldn't have come for two revolvers. Two revolvers. And I understand that when I left the system, they gave up the guns and so on. You know what I mean? I don't take these things personal. I did what I was required to do. I am saying that in the, in the face of this incident, this murder of this young lady, not only the company that employed the security guard should be audited and the process reviewed, all the security companies. And someone asked a very interesting question on social media yesterday. And the question is, how come the all the security companies like GB, PPS, uh, and those persons are never involved in incidents like these? Is the up and coming, this no come security company. These no come. Security companies are the ones who are involved in this thing. Let me bring in Mr. Conway. Mr. Conway, I'm sure you have a lot to say on this. Go ahead. Uh, plenty. We can take the whole day because we have the Private Security Act, which was ascended to by President Jack D.O. on the 31st of December 2010. It's Act number 32 of 2009. And it's easy available. I think it's $1,560, you go to the AG, AGT Motor Parliament building and you can purchase one. And this act is operating in the bridge. We talk about it over and over again. West Demoraro, the last robbery at a Chinese restaurant where I think it's what money name was killed Waterman was not trained to use the weapon. For the matter, he, he, he was not precepted. He wasn't sworn as a supernumerary constable. He wasn't sworn as a supernumerary constable. And nothing has happened to that company. And nothing has happened to that company. The, the, the law gives the, 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 the police the, the power to take certain action for breaches, they can either suspend for a while or, or later on cancel, but they, they have to give the, 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 the service provider an opportunity or the right to be heard, and it is a God-given right, the right to be heard. Remember, it started in, in, in the beginning in Genesis, when Adam and Eve committed themselves, the Lord didn't pass sentence on them right away. He called them and asked them what happened before he, he, before he passed sentence on them. Therefore, when there are breaches, it got to be brought to the attention of, of the service providers. And the law gives the, gives the police the power to either suspend or, or, or cancel. And here's what it say, section 10.4, 
when a cancellation or suspension of service occur, the following shall apply. The private security agency shall be ordered by the controlling authority to cease to provide so security service. All firearms and ammunition shall be handed over to the Ghana police force. All clients shall be informed of the cancellation. All security persons shall cease to wear uniforms. Upon suspension, all processing and training of all personnel must cease for the period of suspension. Upon cancellation, all firearms license shall be revoked. Upon cancellation, the appointment of all supervisory constables shall be revoked. Upon cancellation, the company shall cease to use the emblem, lodge, and logo. So when they do nonsense, the police get the power to take action, and they're not taking action anything. Here is it you give a man a weapon who was not sworn, who as far as the concern had illegal possession of arms and, and ammunition. And it's happening across the country. It's happening all over the place. And then again, too, they're not wearing uniform. They're not even wearing uniform. Section 17 says, a private security agency shall be shall issue to every private security guard and every supervisor employed or engage in it a photo identity card with distinct identification number, special uniform, special badges and caps indicating the logo or emblem of the private security agency concern as approved by the controlling authority. And they said, when on duty three, every private security guard shall, shall wear the uniform and badge given to him and shall display in this person the photo identity card issue on the subsection one, unless otherwise approved by the controlling authority. And after the incident in West Demoraro, I saw a report where the second in command, I think is a female, visiting 21 Chinese restaurant from Tushan to Windsor Forest. I know what she found during a visit. During the visit to the 21 supermarket, she found only one security guard alert. They're not properly attired. All but one were on their cell phone. Perhaps they were reporting to the boss. No bulletproof vests, no uniform. And in some cases, they don't have any uniform. And, and this one is shocking. 100% that precepts photocopy. And they seize one firearm license. So they're working with photocopy precepts. And I heard that if you want a precept, you go to a certain businessman and you pay some money and in two days you get, a, you get an authentic precept. Precepts are for sale just like just like firearms, just like guns. Precepts are for sale. You go to a certain businessman and you pay your money and within two days or so you have your precepts, your authorities, which is, which is signed by senior police officer. So this thing is committed in the breach. They're breaching it all the time and no action is taken. And part of it, too, some of the security company have been making donations to the Ghana police force. They're noting, they're not donating guns and other things. And some you can't touch them because they're the new sheriff in town. So these things are going to happen. They need to start shutting down some of them. They're coming up overnight. And they're doing all sorts of things. They're giving guns to people who are not trained. The extended squad has said, I think about a year ago, that they will be trained on three weeks training. That is not being done. And for me, apart apart from using the, how to train them how to use the weapon, you need to get additional training. Like they got to do conflict resolution. They got to do a bit of anger management. Some of those things are, are must, they, 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 they must do. You got to look at that attitude in recruiting them, you need to picking up anybody and make them security person with, with you are ill-tempered. And, and you and you give them gun. Even in my days coming up as a police, certain ranks they used to get gun. They used to get like what we call a SMS, a Stanley more special, a, a button. The sergeant used to say, "By you mental being good, you don't behave nice. You can't fetch no no firearm. You gotta carry a SMS or, or, or a button." It's time they start enforcing it slavishly, enforcing the Private Security Services Act. Number 2009, people carrying gun. 
gun are designed to kill and it will continue if the police don't really clamp down on it if they don't clamp down on it it will continue it will continue and the breaches will continue close them down if they come into our and when you say close on some of them the rest will, will come into your and as you mentioned paul they do some of those who were established long ago you don't hear nothing about them you don't hear any 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 any, any misconduct for them but those that come overnight those that come like john Biello, john Biello and brother mushroom overnight those are the ones that give the problem i need to snip them in the bud yeah well i will hope that this incident will cause them um to be the catalyst for them to look and to make sure that they look at this well, i i know you know much hope you know a, a young woman has lost her life under tragic circumstances all because of the slackness in the system all because of the slackness and before i go forward let me say earlier when i we spoke about the special branch people operation i may have misstated the name of the sergeant who was in charge of this operation in the east bank where 88 rounds were fired his correct name is sunil Pasad. he was a sergeant there he was also involved in the quindon Bacchus operation he was a corporal at the time sunil Pasad is the correct name so if i stated any other name um let me correct it now and Mr. Conway made the point about uniform. We used to get fun at the senior level when Larry Lewis was a commissioner. When a security company applies and got a license, they had to design a uniform. And before that uniform was approved by the administration of the force, one of their members had to put on the proposed um, uniform and come to us at admin level, at the police admin level, for us to see the uniform, because you couldn't get uniform that are sim that is similar to the GDF, similar to police and these giant service organizations. So we had to come, and I used to decorate them nice, that when they come in the uniform, I used to uh, put on a, a yellow or plate, or put on a, a, a orange pocket to make you, um, to make it, you, you, you're distinct, you are distinct from the others. You used to do that. I used to get laughed because we suspect that Larry Lewis being so wicked, he was just doing this too. Even though he had the authority because they said you have to present what he was giving them colors to make them stand out. He did that. I don't think they do that now because the uniform that is being worn by the private security personnel are, they have to be approved by the police administration must be approved by anything happening now and the next thing that i want to say in terms of these ar-15 rifles my friends there are people who are of the view that these rifles are issued to certain select security companies for reasons other than providing the security at these business places there are other reasons why they're arming these security companies but they're going to backfire as we can see in this one here because one of the things that I, I, I mentioned before and I mentioned again, that these people with these weapons, little or no training, and no tactical training, look at them when you drive around. Many of them put, put themselves in a position of mark and roll up to them and just give them a jumbie lash and take away the gun. No tactical, they don't put themselves in any tactical position where they get a tactical advantage. Look at the one that lost his life at um, Redenu. Men just walk into the place, stock him up, end up shooting him. No tactical position. And that is one of the things you got to teach these people. You go in the supermarket, which is the most tactical, advantageous position. Many of them, they're right at the door. Many of them are the entrance to the supermarket. So somebody with a bad motive can say you're walking. He just disarm them two or three, you walk here, grab the gun, take away the gun from them. And these are things that they have to look at. These are things no business person can should be able to tell you that you want a person with an AR-15 rifle or they want them. They can't. The correct thing should be when the person makes an application for a security um, uh, company to provide service, you should do a survey. Some um, knowledgeable, some professional person from the security company should go there, do a survey. And based on the survey, you're going to determine what type, what level of security to provide. It's based on a survey. 
what level of security is needed what are you protecting these are simple questions what are you protecting are you protecting the the, the, the cash are you protecting property are you protecting the customers what are you protecting all of these are things to be gone through for you to determine at the end of the day that this is the best suited arrangement for this particular security but that don't happen that don't happen yes um then is you're going to place they're up on the more many of the places the security guards are on their phone they got the rifles or shotgun or whatever else slung across the shoulder and they're distracted they're on the phone they are on the phone so anybody want to take it away it is not difficult i'm not advocating for that but i'm saying this so that they could understand the people who run these companies the police should make sure that they do checks as well and identify these issues rather than run around the place and every day you hear police get some they got they talk to two persons about traffic they talk to a couple students and, they, and we have lectures right lectures they have a little talk with people which is good but then they they, 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 they um blast it across the media or they had lectures with um drivers and they had this they are more important thing equally important or even more important than that people are dying on the roads these supermarkets now we see um people are targeted and of course the, the man that we do lost his life but you have so many robberies in recent times at these supermarkets a lot of robberies go and do a survey go and do a survey and you may be able to advise the people them how to best protect how to better protect the the, 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 the property and the assets so folks um we, we thought it necessary to bring you up to date with these issues i don't think we had expressed condolences to the um relative of this security guard who was uh, killed uh, if we did not do so i want to do so now to express condolences to our twin sister and the other uh, relatives on the side from the report the deceased my dad uh, Tisha has two children two motherless children you, you have there now these things are and all because again of the of, of a broken down system a broken down system one the company get ar-15 tight rifle two they give it to a man who clearly did not have the temperament to be using that type of weapon and what happened man end up killing somebody and and is the circumstances this man was not a duty the fire wasn't issued to him he went and he told a colleague that the supervisor said give me this gun and this and, and even if it were so that is wrong supervisor can't tell him and over gun to the next man that should not be you have to have better protocols in handing over firearms should not be so it appears as though there's a protocol in this company where a man can turn up and say look the supervisor said give me the gun and without verifying whether it is so the gun is handed over and i'm saying that even if the supervisor did authorize this man to get a gun that is bad bad business as we would say should not happen that way did this man sign receiving this gun i'm sure no so you're just handing over somebody might have uplifted this firearm and you're just handing over this gun to the next man because the supervisor says so no record i'm sure there's no record of that process and you want to tell me this man is not culpable apart from the fact that he should be dismissed forthwith he might be legally um culpable criminally culpable for, for, for that the company let me understand this clearly we mentioned it last week the company who's who owns this firearm the company to whom this firearm was issued is responsible vicariously for this death and i hope the the, the, the relatives of the deceased Get a good lawyer. Get a good lawyer. Because the fact that they own the firearm that ended up in the arms of this murderer, they are vicariously liable for the murder. So I hope you all get a good lawyer. And that is the type of action that will it bring some sense to this thing. Not only uh, what Ben tell me, they had an audit and they seize all the firearm. No, that is that is a good initial stage. But you have to go further. Bring legal action against this company. We are the two hour mark. And Mr. Conway, your closing remarks, please. Just to get on to Ben, you know, ordering that the firearms be seized. 
Ben, ben again, what authority to, 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 to do that? Is the controlling authority and the controlling authority, authority is the commissioner of police. So here again, Ben getting involved in operational matters. Just like how you got Saxakali and, and, and get involved in operational matters for us. That's why you had uh, so many things went, 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 went wrong there. Is the controlling authority who is the commissioner of police? Because according to the law, if the if there is a if there is a cancellation or suspension, the person has got to apply to the mini has got to appeal to the minister. So the minister can 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 suspend or thing there because the man has got to apply to the minister after the controlling authority has done that. And one other quick thing, you know, Paul, we are the police annual officers conference. In other words, normally at the end of it, you we used to come up with a conference statement saying what was discussed, you know, on the division, the focus on, on was nothing and nothing of the kind, a wall of silence, a wall of silence, police conference finish, no conference statement. Well, Mr. Khan, we have some issues there with his um, audio. Um, let me close off. We're done uh, into two hours. And to say this, you know, there are so many other things that we wanted to talk about. I told you last week when I announced that we, there would not be any program on Monday. I said, we're going to make it up. And here, let me say this. We're going to make it up. So tomorrow at 11 o'clock, tomorrow, Thursday, the 21st, we are here again to tell you about the things we were not able to tell you about today. So students, be in class tomorrow, Thursday, the 21st of March at 11. And all of those things, like the current UN um, questioning of the government about corruption and all of that, we're going to talk about it tomorrow. We can't wait until next week. So tomorrow will be the makeup program. As we say, we are not, no run. Run, we're not giving more time. We're giving you another program tomorrow. Oh, man. Y'all yeah, don't be covetous, man. Don't be covetous. We are giving you another program tomorrow. Share the word from now. God spare life. God's willing. Tomorrow at 11 o'clock, we are going to be on again with another episode of Speaking Out, Exposing Corruption and Incompetence. You can't want anything better than that, man. You can't want. And you haven't even given sufficient thumbs up. You haven't given sufficient thumbs up. And yeah, but notwithstanding that, we're gonna come again tomorrow, um, God's willing, to give you a, another episode. Until then, stay well and see you then. Bye. Let's say no one to end. Let me see.